Okay, guys. I'm here for the finale of WCW Tober, the review series where I review all the Halloween Havoc shows from 1989 to 2000 for the first part of the month of October, which is pretty much has been. And today we reach the bottom of the proverbial barrel because the finale of of WCW Tober is Halloween Havoc 2000. On October the 29th, 2000, from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. I don't know why anyone came to this show in the shade that WCW was in, but hey. There are 11 matches on this card. That's a tad bit of overkill. So, but... Opening contest, a three, a triple threat match for the WWE World Tag Team Championships. Mark Jindrak and Sean O'Hare versus the Boogie Knights versus Rey Mysterio Jr. and Kidman in the match of the night. Yeah, this is the match of the night and it has Disco Inferno in it of all people. <laughs> this is a very good tag match, honestly. Uh... Each team gets their signature spots in. Jindrak and I heard that double beal from the outside in that they always did. Um, eventually, a Sean Tom bomb by O'Hare gets the win. But yeah, very good match. One of the few gyms in WCW in 2000 that you can actually find. Uh, but this is the match of the night, like I said. And it has a Disco Inferno in it. That's kind of sad when the Disco Inferno is in your is in your best match of the show. So then we get a WCW Hardcore Championship match: Reno versus Sergeant A Wall with old school hardcore rules, and it's a generic hardcore match. It's half a star. There's a spot where you use a computer monitor that is clearly not hooked up because it's not working. That is clearly just in the back of the spot because it's unplugged. Reno eventually gets the one with the roll of the dice on a table on the floor. And then the perfect event come in. They help beat up AWOL. And then uh, Misfits in Action of Lieutenant Logan Corporal Cajun come in. And they make a match for the next match. And instead of staying in the ring, the four guys go back to get their own individual entrance. So then we get the Misfits in Action, Lieutenant Logan Corporal Cajun, versus the perfect event in the second best match of the night, honestly. It's two and a half stars. Former Lake Tag Match. MIA wins after the perfect event has a miscommunication and Palumbo kicks Stasiak in the face. <laughs> uh, okay, little match. Uh, two and a half stars. And then we just go off the rails on this show, which happens in a lot of WCW shows. You start off with a couple really good matches, and then off the rail you go. With 2,000 WCW shows, anyway. As it's the franchise and Tory Wilson versus Conan and Tigress, this match is half a star. Conan and Tigress win with a face buster on uh, the franchise. This match isn't really all that good. Especially since Conan was injured earlier in the night. And that doesn't play in. And it played into a little bit. That's why it gets half star rating. But it's just not good. Half a star. So then we get a DNA match. Buff Bagwell versus Ric Flair. What is a DNA match you might ask? Well it's the first blood match. It's the first guy to bleed loses. Uh, and this is also during the whole who is the father of Stacey Keeler's baby thing that drove David Flair crazy in the year 2000. Uh, no stars here. Bagwell wins after David Flair gets busted open. Then out comes Lex Luger. Luger turns on Bagwell. What a surprise. He had been turning on everyone since he came back from WCW. And Bagwell leaves him in the mouth. David Flair gets his DNA, takes it backstage to these scientists. This went nowhere. In fact, I think this is David Flair's final WCW pay-per-view match, if I am not mistaken. I think he, I know he's at Mayhem the next month getting involved in like the Jeff Jarrett-Buff Bagwell match. But he didn't wrestle on that show. 
In fact, I think that was his last WCW appearance, but I could be wrong on that. So, no stars there. So, then we get a kickboxing match for the WCW commissionership. As it's the Cat versus above average Mike Sanders. Now, they have a legit story reason here as why would Mike Sanders challenge a three-time world karate champion to a kickboxing match? Who knows? Sanders gets his rear end kicked. The only reason he wins this match is because Shane Douglas comes down, hits the cat with a uh, chain, which knocks the cat down. Cat gets up, and then he gets counted out outside the ring, which gives Sanders the win. So, yeah, Sanders didn't do anything in this match. So, this match gets no stars. Thought about giving it into the negative, but at least it did set up a match for Mayhem, so it at least will get zero because of that. So then we get a handicap, so then we get Mike Awesome versus Vampiro in a one-star match. Now, this is not a Falls Count Anywhere match, which I want you to keep in mind. But, and even though this isn't a no disqualification match, because it's WCW, you can do whatever you want. Awesome throws a table at Vampiro, or something, that doesn't get a DQ. Then on the outside, Awesome does an Awesome Bomb on the floor. And the referee counts on the floor, despite it not being, despite the fact that this match is not a Falls Count Anywhere match. Did WCW just allow wrestlers to make rules up on the fly? Because this match was not Falls Count Anywhere, it was no disqualification, yet you can do anything you wanted in WCW, obviously. Uh, there is a good spot of Mike Awesome doing an awesome bomb off the top rope, which is ultimately what gets the win for Mike Awesome, so one star. Then we get a handicap match for the WWE United States Championship. Lance Storm and Hacksaw Jim Duggan versus General Erection. This is when WCW decided to turn Hacksaw Jim Duggan, the quintessential American babyface, and turn him into a Canadian heel. He used to say, this didn't get dug in heel heat, this got him, why the heck did you do that heat? Because no one liked it. And Duggan didn't like it either. Uh, finishes, general erection, moonsaults, uh, Duggan and gets the win. It's half a star. Erection would actually lose its title, I think, like the next night on Nitro back to Lance Storm because of Major Guns Interference. After he had won her back, it wasn't something, which again set another matchup at Mayhem. Some of the things about those in 2000 when it comes to what they set up and when things are, are fuzzy. Because I don't really ever want to remember most of it, but half a star. Oh, jeez. Then we get Sting versus Jeff Jarrett. And how do you know Sting just did not care anymore about this company? This match. This is Sting versus Jeff Jarrett, but he but during the match there are five other Stings that come out. One Sting is from the Sting in the first Halloween Havoc. One Sting is from when Sting won the WCW Championship in 1990. One Sting is the Wolfpack Sting, and the other two are Stings that are dressed exactly like the Sting of 2000. So yeah, you took your franchise player. You took your franchise that had been there the entire time and never left to go to WWE until just recently after w until 12 years after until 14 year 12, 11, 13 years after WWE was out of business or something. And you're relegating him to this. Jeff Jarrett doesn't get the only offense Jarrett gets in mostly is those stuff after all the other stings come in. There's a spot where one of the Stings, uh, which Sting beats up under the ring, and gets the death drop to, and then another Sting repels from the ceiling, and that Sting's ball on the top of his head. Then a Sting comes in when Sting's got the Scorpion on Jared. His one will get to our Sting no sells, but he sells the one from Jeff Jared, which gets the win. Sting was gone from WCW at this point until the very last Nitro. Meaning, Sting had got so fed up with this company, he did not bother to ever do anything else until the very last Nitro. 
I applaud Sting for everything he did and everything he had to put up with in the year 2000, but this was just stupid. You take your franchise play and you basically have to have them do a comedy match. You know, this isn't the Disco Inferno here. Sting's not the Disco Inferno. Let's treat him a little bit better, WCW. No stars. So then you got Booker T versus Scott Steiner for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match. It's happening because Booker T wants to give Goldberg more time to ready himself for his match later. Doesn't make any sense, and the champion can't really do that. Has no real booking power. But hey, it's WCW. It's WCW in the year 2000. The same company in which David Arquette has won the World Championship in. So why should we complain, or why should we question anything? This is a one-star match. Scott Steiner, Booker T wins by DQ when Scott Steiner just starts speeding up the referees. This led to another cage match with a straight jacket at Mayhem, which Steiner eventually won. Uh, one star. So the main event of this show, which by the way only has five minutes left, is gold is a handicap match. Goldberg versus Chronic in a zero star in a nothing match. Chronic gets a table, Goldberg spears Clark through it, pins Clark, then eventually spears and jackhammers Adams. One, two, three, gets the win. That's it. That's all that match is. So, out of 55 stars, because it's nine, this gets nine and a half. This is an F just like 1999's is. Uh -huh. This is an F just like 98's is. 99 is a tad bit better than this, but still not much. Uh, this show has two good matches on it. The rest are trash. But that's the story of WCW in the year 2000. That that just is. No wonder this company went out of business like five months later. So this will be in the WCW Tober playlist. I hope if you watched all 12 of these, if you watch all these videos, hope they. I hope you enjoyed them. I actually enjoyed doing this series. Uh, my next content for this channel is not going to be wrestling related. It's going to be, uh, movies or TV stuff that's Halloween themed for the remainder of the month. And, and the first one of that will be up on Wednesday. Uh, it probably won't have a title unless I can think of something clever for it. But, so this will be the WWE Dover playlist. If you like the video, like button is down there. Subscribe button is down there. And thank you for watching. Bye.